Hey Yagaho for the home opener for the Utah Jasmine here in GBA Season 3. This is Week 3, and we are up against a uh, familiar opponent from Season 2. Tom, coach of the San Jose Torpedoes, perennial playoff contender, narrowly missing it Season 1, making it Season 2. And currently we find ourselves both on top of our respective divisions. Tom the gold and myself on the silver, both 1-1 one and one at a positive differential. And so this... Sets up to be, um, yeah, a pretty important match this week. Uh, top two teams in the divisions going at it and going to see who can stay on top and who will at least have a reasonably good chance to uh, fall behind some of the other teams uh, in their division. So, uh, yeah, Tom has a really scary team. Um, it's, yeah, he's got some good bulk. He's got some big power as well. And, um yeah, it's really not that big a surprise that he's on top of his division. Uh, you know, suffered a bit of a setback there in the first week with the weird uh, uh, not 6-6 six -six timeout. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at what he's got here. We got Mega Venusaur, Latias, Clefable, which I was... If I had to say anything he's 100% bringing, it's going to be Clefable. Um, Probopass, the Golden Jew, as he likes to call it. Uh, Arcanine and Raptor Bird. Not appearing are Alkazam, which is good for reasons you'll uh, see momentarily. Black Kyurem, which I was I'm perpetually mortified by, if only because it's got that definitely uber BST, but, you know, Moo Pool and typing and whatnot. Um, Swampert, which I was kind of not really thinking he would bring, and uh, also no Hitmon Top, which means there's not going to be any Rapid Spin. There could still theoretically be some Defog with Latias or potentially Star Raptor, but I should be good to go setting up Hazards. And uh, also no Scizor, which isn't that big a surprise, since I do kind of have the number one scissor counter ever since fourth gen Zapdos so anyway gotta go ahead and take a look at what I brought and alright he's coming down from the mountain it's the first home game we're bringing out Agron and he's gonna be if, if you uh, quickly scan uh, the team right here you'll see we got three guys with life orb uh, and then a mega Lopini, which may as well be life orb uh, and then two bulky things and that's kind of the t way the team is this week so uh, Agron just kind of has you know uh, my, the typical three attacks that I always ran on Agron in 4th uh, gen. You know, uh, head smash to destroy whatever is uh, op opposing Agron at the current moment. Uh, Earthquake and Iron Head just to round stuff out. And uh, Totemai is replacing Rock Polish just because it's really cool. I mean, Agron just literally tears off parts of his body just so he can move faster. It's freaking amazing. Um, anyway, and then we have Zapdos and Chansey. You know, kind of the, the default core that we usually do. Uh, Dose being bulky enough to take on, you know, uh, hits and uh, not bringing any sort of stay in electric attack this week though. Uh, Neo wanted Volt Switch, try to get some momentum going on. I uh, wanted Heat Wave just on the off chance he did bring Scizor. And then I was kind of thinking between HP Ice and HP Grass. HP Ice would be better against Latias, who would otherwise wall me. HP Grass would, of course, be nicer against Swampert. So I decided, you know what? S screw the whole hidden power thing. It's not going to hit for very much anyway, especially not on Latias. So let me just bring Toxic so I can just sling Toxic at somebody uh, if that does indeed um, need to be a thing I do. Uh, Chansey, going to be Brain Stealth Rock this week, as well as T-Wave, uh, one of my you know more standard Chansey sets. Uh, the only interesting thing is I decided to throw uh, some considerable speed EVs in there uh, just so we could outpace Swampert or Clefable. You know, if I get Clefable down, uh, I think the thought was if I got Clefable down really low, uh, maybe he thinks he can get a uh, Moonlight or a Softboiled or, uh, you know, whatever. Up against Chansey, um, not going to be the case, as I uh, should be able to outspeed, as, assuming it doesn't have any speed investment. Um, you know, just kind of one of those things where, you know, if a wall's got self-recovery, but everything on the opponent's team outspeeds and can kill it, it becomes, you know, much, much worse. So uh, that was kind of the thought behind uh, throwing some speed EVs in Chansey. Uh, and likewise, just being able to outpace Pert uh, would be pretty nice as well. I'm just kind of bringing back the Life Orb set this week. Uh, Giga Drain going to be used for the Grass Stab, and uh, because of course he has a Mega Venusaur, which complete you know any kind of poison type completely resists Whimsicott Stab. Uh, we're also going to be bringing Psychic. Um, uh, so you got Probo does not resist uh, Whimsicott Stab. He is neutral to Grass, so there's that. Giga Drain, and then a Mystery Move that I don't actually get to use. Um, so uh, you guys can theorize on what uh, what that might be. Galley going to be bringing Life Orb as well. Um, just uh, I knew I wanted to bring Stab, Close Combat, just for the you know, give the most damage possible. Um, and then uh, Zen Headbutt. Um, we kind of, once again, there's a really fat thing that's weak to Psychic, uh, much like Week 1 with Amoongus. 
and uh, at least with the same typing, I should grasp poison. And uh, I kind of need a nice, strong stab psychic attack to take that down. So that's what Galad's going to be here primarily for. Um, and of course, you know, going to throw a knockoff on there. Kind of the typical Galad coverage. Fighting, psychic, and dark is pretty good. And then uh, the last move I kind of debated on a couple things and decided, eh, even though I, I'm not the biggest fan of sneak with life orb because it's obviously a low power, power move and, uh, you know, you're going to be losing a tenth of your life for it. I decided, eh, Latias, it, it does a decent chunk to that, and, um, you know, it might be good for that. So, decided to throw Sneak on there, and then Megalop is going to be adamant this week, which is the reason I was happy to not see Alkazam. I think I dropped the speed down to outspeeding probably Latias. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, yeah, and then just all stab, you know, fake out, high jump kick. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, but w obviously would not be outpacing with Adamant a, uh, a timid Alakazam. So at the same time, though, fake out. Assuming uh, he didn't get cute and bring inner focus Alakazam, which I thought he might do. Um, but we see no Alakazam, so you know two fake outs would kill Alakazam anyway. So it wasn't, o and I have a chancy, so I'm not overly worried uh, about Zam, despite Psy Shock, of course, being a thing. Pretty much rounds out the team, so let's go ahead and get into the game. All right, so as for leads, we both have birds that with uh, Volt Turn that we l usually like to lead with. Um, I, however, am going to go ahead and lead with mine because the only thing that it's definitely going to get outsped by is Latias, which I would just proceed to promptly apply Toxic to. Uh, so he doesn't need to lead with his bird, I lead with mine, and that's going to make for a very quick uh, turn one decision for me. Just going to immediately click Volt Switch. He didn't bring Swampert, so he can't stop it. Uh, we see, you know, Intimidate, so, you know, Reckless is, of course, going to be a thing. And uh, Reckless Double Edge is actually, like, a big problem. It will do, like, 80 to 90%, I think, to the Zapdos if it's Choice Banded. So that is something, you know, that should be feared. You know, Zapdos is not a hard stop to the Raptor Bird, uh, which may come into play later. Uh, but anyway, either his Raptor is going to die or I'm, I'm going to get Switch Initiative. Uh, ends up to be the latter, so he goes into uh, Venusaur to take a Volt Switch. And that chip damage going to be very appreciated, actually, because Gallade, despite being adamant max attack life orb, Still does not have a clean one shot on this thing with Zen Headbutt. Um, sh should do like 80 90% depending on um, what he's at as far as uh, physical bulk EVs are concerned. Um, but from that range, I'm definitely going to go ahead and go for it. I'm also not max speed. I think I have like 202 speed EVs, so I could even potentially get outsped. But anyway, uh, he's going to make the safe play and just go into Wuffles and get some Intimidate and take his Zen Headbutt. You know, could have. Could have gone close combat, but again, like, that's an extra, what, third damage from what I did to this Arcanine, which is going to have Morning Sun, so definitely no reason to try to overpredict right there and just just go for the safe play. Make Arcanine come in, and, uh, yeah, we see lefties, we see Intimidate, so it's probably just going to be bulky, which means it's likely not going to have close combat, so Chansey sh should be pretty safe. Uh, absorbs the Will-O-Wisp, and, of course, it's going to natural cure it off momentarily. Uh, we, of course, saw that he had a uh, Reckless Bird, which, though, it's not going to be from 4th Gen, so his only remaining defog option is going to be Latias. And so I'm just going to definitely take this opportunity to set up a quick Stealth Rock. Um, he may or may not have a way to remove it. He's got two things weak to it. Always just a general good thing to get set up. And, yeah, this is, what, turn 4 we're going to be setting up Stealth Rock, so... Should be pretty good. Uh, we're going to see what comes in, which is going to be Rabbi Probo, the Golden Jew. And the fact that he's switched it in just, like, straight up as, like, a counter to Chansey makes me very afraid of what it's going to do. Um, you know, just very curious. Could it explode? I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking about going into Aggron, thinking about going into Zapdos. Um, those would not appreciate an Earth Power and, or a Power Gym, respectively. So I just decide, and eh, let me just go into the guy who's got, you know, the best overall just, you know, whatever special attack he goes for. Um, uh, special attack, which is of course going to be Gallade with his uh, innate special bulk. And uh, ends up to have just, just go for Taunt, which is definitely A-OK -okay as I'm a 4 attack Gallade. And here, because Probo can get sturdy, uh, he told me after the game it was for Pharaoh Thorn, and uh, so it was likely Magnet Pull. But just because it can potentially get sturdy, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and knock off first in case he switches out or to break sturdy. Clefable comes in, doesn't take rocks damage, so it's definitely Magic Guard. And yeah, I get some leftovers removed. I did think about putting Poison Jab on Gallade over Sneak, but it didn't do considerably more than Zen Headbutt, and I just didn't think there would ever be a situation where I would ever predict Clefable to come in specifically, uh, especially when I have Aggron and just switching to Clefable. Uh, thankfully, he doesn't try to get cute with any sort of uh, hidden power fighting or ground uh, predictions right away. 
and uh, now Clefable has taken a little bit of damage, doesn't have lefties, and I can either Iron Head or I can Head Smash, and, you know, this season, as I've said before, is the Head Smash adventure. So, going for it, click and Head Smash, gonna switch out back into Rabbi Probo, and Head Smash does not KO it, but it does do about a third HP to a dude who resists it and has, like, pace 145 defense. So uh, here, however, the calc I'm using, which is, uh, I guess, the standard uh, showdown calc, comes into play. Uh, the first Probo Pass set says uh, Offensive Pivot, which makes me think, hmm, he could be trying to use this, bait an Earthquake, and then go into Latias or Star Raptor to try to steal some momentum back, which uh, he's definitely been on the back, he uh, back heel for the duration of the game so far. Um, but I decided, you know what, if he goes into those things, I've got Chansey, I've got Zapdos, I, I have switch-ins for those if he does want to switch. If he's going to switch, so be it. Um, if he's not going to switch, I'm not going to risk Aggron on Earth Power trying to get, you know, fancy. So I do. he does stay in, I do Earthquake, and Rabbi Probo goes down. So Aggron gets his first kill of the season. Pretty happy about that. And then here comes a very pivotal moment of the game. So Aggron is max speed, um, but Venusaur, if it's got, I believe, 20 speed EVs outspeeds, and I, I think the, like, standard set that I was calculating against, just, you know, pulled up, uh, said 20 speed EVs, so... Uh, kind of dicey, uh, if he's, which uh, that is what he's going to be bringing in here momentarily. Um, however, I'm hoping that because I, you know, kind of have the reputation of, you know, I'm the bulky team that can't hit back very hard, um, he's just going to try to go max bulk on the Mega Venusaur and just try to, you know, bulk it out, um, kind of like he did last week. So uh, it's a bit of a risk. I might get outsped, but I'm going to take that risk. I don't have a great switch into Mega Venusaur. I'm just going to go ahead and stay in. He's at about 75% from taking Bolt Switch and Stealth Rock. Uh, which I think at the time I thought was two bats of Stealth Rock. Uh, but Head Smash should do round about 75%, which is barely any less than Zen Headbutt. So, yeah, figure that one out. Anyway, so he does become Mega. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to click Head Smash, the Head Smash Adventure. Do I outspeed? I do. Does it hit? It does. Does it die? Yes, it does. So Agron, already off to two KOs, has taken down... The other Steel Rock, the inferior Steel Rock type, uh, as well as now his Mega, and I am riding high right now. Agron has taken two KOs and is just running s so well right now. Agron, I, I love you. Ugh, you're so good. Anyway, um, so trying to get over myself and uh, trying to trying to get back on point, see what he's going to do. And uh, I believe he's going to drop in Raptor Bird. Which, um, you know, after a big play like that, I don't expect anything else in the safe play. Um, so I'm, which is, of course, going to be close combat as I resi quad resist both the stabs. Um, so I'm just going to go immediately into Zapdos. And uh, he does indeed go for close combat, does exactly 50 points. Uh, so now I've got some damage to work with. Uh, I'm going to run a calc right here to check uh, if it's uh, banded or scarfed. Um, I believe I determine it's most likely banded based on that damage. Knowing my EV spread, not of course knowing his, uh, which is uh, probably yeah something I'm more okay with because I do have Megalop in the back who will be able to handle a lot better. Uh, anyway, once again, I'm just gonna Volt Switch out, and Clefable comes in, and guess what's gonna come back in, guys? Give you one guess. Uh, now it's even lower on HP, and uh, yep, Agron's coming right back in, and uh, once again is going to threaten this Clefable. Um, you know, we already have clicked Head Smash twice, so I decide, eh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go Iron Head this time. I believe it hits, um, you know, uh, it won't hit Arcanine neutrally, but it'll hit everything else neutrally, do some big damage to it, and, uh, you know, it's, that's, that would be pretty ballsy, uh, considering how, you know, risky I've been with Head Smash already <laughs> to bring in an Arcanine, which would probably just die. So, and then, of course, I'd, you know, just go, probably just go right back to Chansey and same old, same old, so, uh. Instead, Clefable just stays in and uh, gets deaded from Iron Head. So, you know, I mean, if there's another move that can compete with Head Smash for being a pretty manly move, it's probably Iron Head, you know, another kind of head buddy move. But anyway, Wuffles comes in now, gets Intimidate, and so, of course, that's probably a glitch in the game, honestly. I don't, I don't think Intimidate should affect Agron because it's Agron, but anyway. i uh, got to switch out back into Medi as uh, it's going to go for Flare Blitz, which... Uh, yeah, it does some good damage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I could. I want to T-Wave this thing, but I'm going to go ahead and soft bold up first just in case he gets a burn. I get too low from the burn. Uh, go figure, he does get a burn, uh, which also happened, I believe, last season. So uh, very glad I clicked uh, soft bold right there. Also, if he did have extreme speed, um, he'd be able to E-speed, and that also would likewise be bad. 
I would go ahead and just lose Medi and then, you know, I'd have a T-Wave on there and that would be it. So, uh, anyway, uh, he decides to take the turn the Morning Sun and now I'm back up at a reasonable amount of hit points. Uh, pff, about as full as I'm going to get, actually. And this now is the turn to apply a T-Wave onto Arcanine. We've had a had a couple of turns of uh, some, you know, fast-paced Aggron smashing faces, but uh, now it's time to get back on the, uh, go back on the defensive, you know, bob and weave a little bit. And uh, see what Chansey can do for us in the next couple turns, which uh, is going to start off by applying a T-Wave, thinking about what he wants to do, which I imagine is just going to either be a Switch or a Flare Blitz. And uh, he does Flare Blitz, and we're just going to go ahead and give him a nice T-Wave. And then uh, my plan here is to just do what Chansey does. It's cruel, it's mean, but it's effective. Sop World until he gets a Parahax. And, yeah, um, the burn is going to be... Uh, quite a hindrance. I could, you know, remove it by switching out. I believe at this point, I actually plan on, as soon as he gets a Parahax, I'd like to switch out to somebody else. I'll, I'll be, I'm not actually sure who I'd switch out to at this point. Uh, or maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe just start applying S-Tosses whenever he gets a Parahax turn. But, uh, anyway, he just decides to go ahead and switch out before he gets a Parahax turn. And, uh, here's this thing, which is... Uh, I would also like to paralyze this, but... Uh, I think back to a uh, game last season, I think it was against Kyle with his Latios, though, uh, where I was really fearing sub-DD, and sub-calm mind would actually put me in a pretty bad hole right here, so I'm actually going to click Seismic Toss first, just to make sure he's not going to sub up, because, you know, that would uh, potentially cause problems. It's probably not going to lose me the game, of course, but, you know, it's going to cause problems, so I just uh, S-Toss first, and then uh, Latios doesn't have priority, so I'm not as worried about, you know, extreme speed or anything like that, so... Uh, I do get it paralyzed now after making sure it's not going to try to sub up. And now we're going to do the exact same thing I said earlier. Just be, you know, maximum cruelty with Chansey. Just uh, soft-boiled until he gets a Parahax. As uh, the combination of... I am gaining slight amounts of HP uh, from the combination of Psyshock and Burn. Assuming he uh, does live up to the Crit Pedo's name from last season. But uh, finally, Aladias gets paralyzed against Chansey. Uh, this one's Melisandre, though. It's not Victoria, the Latias from the first game last season. And uh, from there, I could uh, I could S-Toss. I could do some other stuff. But uh, I'm actually going to switch back into Aggron now because he's paralyzed and Psyshock hits on the physical defense. Uh, I actually expect Aggron to take 10 more points there, but it does not. So uh, it's going to actually survive this bout of Life Orb. And Aggron with four KOs in this game so far. We still have all six guys, so... Uh, here's Raptor Bird. Um, if he had Double Edge, this would definitely be a good time to go for it, as it would potentially kill Dose right here. Um, but, you know, uh, he's definitely, I think, probably reeling at this point. He's down 2-6, uh, and he's got a Paralyzed Arcanine in the back, so he just clicks Close Combat. Um, I click Roost here, which was probably a little bit of bad bad mannersing. Um, from my perspective, I wanted to make sure he didn't do something like switch out to Arcanine uh, as I kill it, and then you know, uh, comes back in with Raptor Bird, and then I've got to deal uh, with a double edge at some point. Uh, however, what I don't think about is that if I kill Arcanine, it's going to be with Volt Switch, so Zapdos won't even be in anyway, so bad logic on my part, but that was the thought process behind making sure we were at enough HP to live a double edge. And uh, indeed, you know, again, as you see right here, we, uh, he brings in the Arcanine, uh, Volt Switch out, and uh, Yuna's going to be able to hopefully uh, wrap this up with a fake out Stealth Rock damage of Fake Out doesn't kill. I'm reasonably sure it's banded, so I uh, should be able to outspeed it anyway. But uh, Fake Out does indeed take down the Star Raptor, and that's going to be the first 6 0 of the Utah Jasmine career. So, yeah, not really sure what to say after a game like that. Uh, I feel like good game or you played well. That kind of just comes off as condescending. So, I won't officially say those things, even though I kind of just did. Uh, but anyway. Uh, you know, Tom is definitely a great coach, and he's got a good team. So, uh, you know, I definitely believe he'll bounce back. Got a tough one next week, uh, for sure, against John uh, and then the Pelippers, runners-up from Season 2. But uh, definitely expect to see him go far, and maybe he'll make something happen with the nose that he picked. <laughs> but anyway, uh, definitely we're going to enjoy this win, uh, celebrate our win, and not the opponent's loss. Because, you know, that's how we do around here, and should, is, is MVP a question on this one? I know I kind of hoodwinked you guys last week, but no, the MVP is, you know, Pokemon of the game is clearly the boss god, uh, four KOs, no deaths, I, I believe this is his GBA debut, uh, outside Mega, of course, and, 
Yeah, just basically did exactly what Agron does, which is kill things. Um, he's a steel-plated dinosaur, and yeah, he's awesome. And that's why he's on our logo. And yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the home field was certainly, certainly happy to see this uh, Agron, kind of our uh, de facto mascot. You know, he's right there in the logo. Uh, just have such a fantastic opening game for us in our home opener. So, uh, you know, certainly though, you know, team effort uh, as well. You know, Wimscott did not even get to hit the field. He was the uh, Pokemon of the game last week. Um, definitely had some tricks up his sleeve that we didn't get to show off. Um, and then uh, just Japdos and Chansey sitting there in the back, you know, being our primary defensive core. And that proved to be all we needed this week. Uh, it was kind of a bit of a weird team. Two walls and then four sweepy dudes. So... Uh, but it worked out. It worked out very well. And definitely going to be glad to take that huge boost in differential heading into the next week. Uh, so the next week's matchup uh, is actually kind of interesting. Uh, if you've been following GBA News, you know that uh, Swagliff, the Pittsburgh Steelix coach, uh, resigned because of uh, personal reasons that he found with the league, whatever. Not going to get into that. You guys can go look into that if you if you want to. Uh, but anyway, he has been replaced with the Sorganist uh, Longtime buddy of Super Blah, and uh, from the back in the in the Zat days, AAX and whatever else other Zats, uh, he is the Minnesota Timber Wolves, and he has inherited just uh, just basically just inherited Joe's team, uh, which was a pretty solid team to begin with. Uh, but holy carp, uh, has made like a million trades, not literally, but um, ha has well over half of his roster has been traded off uh, from what Joe had. So I have no idea what he actually has right now or if he's even done trading this week. So <laughs> um, definitely going to be a different team to face than uh, I was originally planning. You know, it's going to be a very different team and it's going to be, you know, obviously a different uh, coach uh, playing it. And I'm only going to have one game of, uh, you know, which is will be this week uh, against the Sawsbucks to get a gauge on his tendencies and stuff. So should be an interesting game. Uh, definitely. Uh, but that does put with the win that does put us at two and one at plus eight. Uh, definitely well in the, ahead of everyone else in the division, and uh, I believe probably leading the conference currently, barring something crazy happening. Uh, whereas Sork has kind of inherited the 0-2 record, and uh, as you can see right there, uh, has proceeded to uh, I believe only lost 1-0 uh, to the Saws Bucks this week. So. Uh, Still firmly in the back, but uh, not as far in the back. Um, you know, not, not as bad a loss as you might expect uh, coming in uh, for your first uh, game in the league. Coming in pretty, pretty wet behind the ears, as it were. But anyway, uh, so yeah, it's going to be a drastically different team that I'm going to have to get ready for next week. Um, you know, a, a composition that, um, yeah, just it's totally new. There's goodness, I actually have it pulled up right now, and there's. I think there might be uh, obviously the mega stays the same there's maybe two two I think there's two things besides the mega that are still there from when Joe resigned so <laughs> oh my this is going to be uh, an interesting game next week and uh yeah so we get to keep our number 1 spot uh, in the conference at least for this week and hopefully we'll be able to retain it going forward and uh you know keep this positive differential going I I like how this is feeling See you guys next week for that game. It's going to be another home game, so who knows? Maybe Agron will calm down off the mountain and uh, headbutt Sork back to Minnesota. That would be a pretty long headbutt. But if anyone can do it, Agron can. So, See you guys next week. Later days.